everyone and welcome back to Sew so If I Sew, or welcome if you're new, my name's Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related. And today I'm delighted to finally bring you a sew along, yay! Um, so this is a sew along for a garment that I made recently and absolutely adored and then decided I wanted another version of. So I am of course talking about the Closet Core Pietra Trousers, my first version of which is here. Um, I made the originals in a, oh God, Lyocell twill, and it was my guest blogger project for Lush Cloth. And I love them. I absolutely just, they're fantastic. Like, so, so good. The fit's lovely. Um, I'm gonna add a tiny bit to the rise this time, but otherwise they fit beautifully. And I decided, because I love the flat front and the sort of ruched elastic back, that I'd really like a pair of the shorts. So that's what we're doing today. So this is the pattern for anyone who's not seen it before. And we'll be making this version with the shorts. So the shorts still have a really good pocket. They've got this nice flat front. And then if I show you the back of the pattern, they've got a ruched elasticated back there. So they've got a lovely drawn in, but then quite wide leg, which is what I want as well, because um, as a, like I'm a very small woman, but I'm quite curvy. And so shorts have, for years been sort of the bane of my existence because I love wearing shorts I really really do and I wear like lots of comfortable jersey shorts around the house but denim shorts never fit me properly they either fit my waist and then just don't even remotely like can't get them over my thighs properly or do them up or they fit my waist really nicely no um or they don't fit my bum and my thighs because uh, they're way too big and the pair I've got at the moment which are quite comfortable um, are from Gap and they fit my thighs really well but there is about if I pull them out there's about that much from my body spare or around my hips waist everywhere so they're very comfortable because they fit my legs but they're not comfortable because I don't feel like they are flattering um, and I know some people don't like that word and I'm happy to use it about myself I just try not to use it about other people because that's you know, just a side note, for some people flattering means you look thinner, whereas for me when I talk about myself and something being flattering I mean that it suits my body shape. So for example, because I'm curvy, um, I've got a small waist, I've got 10 inches pretty much between my waist and my hips, for me it's unflattering if it's a straight cut on my form because I'd rather it fitted my body properly. So side note, just because I know some people have an issue with that word, so that's why I use it in this context. I'd never use it about somebody else. So anyway, moving on. So I'm making the shorts and then I thought maybe it would be a good time to segue into denim. Now, lots of you know I've got a couple of denim projects planned, but I'm quite scared to, uh, you know, pull the trigger as it were. I, I'm really not sure about sewing denim. Like I, I know theoretically it's fine. I think it's just a lot of the fitting implications that come with denim require twirling, require a bit more brain. And I'm not there at the moment. Like, I think if I had, you know, like a month off work, nothing to think about and just sewing to do, I reckon I could crack out a pair of jeans I'd be really happy with. But right now, I'm not quite in that headspace. You know, I might be, watch this space in future. But this month is not the month to do that. So what I thought I would do instead is have a go with some stretch denim because stretch denim can be a little bit more forgiving. So in the rag shop sale, I got myself this sky blue stretch denim remnant. If I hold it in the light, I've got my nice series lights one here because it's better at showing you fabric color. So I don't know the weight of this, but it's pretty lightweight. I think it might be eight ounce, maybe that. Um, it's got no, so it's two way stretch. It's got no stretch that way and a bit of bit of bounce this way, which is good. And it's a really nice um, kind of textured denim, but it's not too heavy. So it will take the elastic at the back and still look nice. That's my sort of aim. Um, so I'm very, very excited. I also thought this would be a great chance to work with top stitching thread for the first time. So I'm using the Gutemann top stitching thread. It's so thick. I'm quite excited actually, because it's um, it just, it's really nice to use, or so, sorry, not to use, because I'm using it, to handle. Um, and this pattern has a lot of top stitching. So if you look at these lines, there's top stitching next to all of them. Um, so I thought this would actually be a really nice chance to have a go at top stitching on denim. Uh, so I'm using, what is that, 75 is the colour I'm using. It's a perfect match actually. 
um, and I'm using the same on the machine so I've got a, a standard Gutman sole thread on there as well but if I if I hold this up you might might not be able to see it you might it it disappears pretty much so it's it's perfect so you'll see the bulk of the top stitching but it won't be like colour differentiated or anything which is great so the machine is prepared I've filled my bobbin with top stitching thread and then there's another bobbin in the machine with the sewol. We've got our fabric. Now we just need to go and cut it out. And um, the final thing is, I've still not managed to get a denim needle to fit in this machine. I love this machine so much, but I've not managed to get a denim needle to fit in it. So I figured I would go for something heavier. So this is my other, so I have two pin cushions. I have my big Liberties one, which I love, which is full of actual pins. And then this one is a lot harder and it's full of needles because I find that I don't want to put a half used um, needle back in the thing because I think it's new. So what am I looking for? I feel like I have a 130 on here somewhere. I know I've got a denim needle there, which is pretty new actually. So I might have one last go at getting it in, but I just can't. I don't know if it's because it's really coated at the top, but I, I've not been able to fit it in this machine. So I might, I'll have one more go and then if not, I'll use a 130. So let's go and cut out some fabric. cut out the shorts last weekend and now we're up for some sewing so it is Friday I have just done a week of events I have 12 events this month and I have now done four yay um, so feeling tired but feeling good I'm very very much looking forward to my Friday night sewing sesh so we are going to crack on with our Pietra shorts which are next to me here so the first step is to construct the front of shorts so if i delve in here and find our nice little pattern envelope i can show you what we've done so as you will see there are these panels on the front of the shorts so what we're going to do is we're going to create the front so there is actually this is confusing but i promise will make sense this is the pocket panel here it's actually very long and then you fold it back on itself to create a pocket. Like, how do I explain this? I get better explain it with the pieces, so I'll do one side and show it to you. But basically, you end up with one inner pocket piece and one outside panel, which you stitch here. And then you fold this pocket piece, so like my elbow, back on itself. So you've still got a little bit of exposed pocket up here. And then a nice sharp edge there. So it's like you create the pocket by folding, but I'll show that to you in a second. And then once you've created your pocket, you stitch it onto this nice front um, inside panel there. So let's do that. I'm excited to sew these shorts with you, actually, because firstly, I've never made shorts, actually, thinking about it. But also it should be quite a quick sew along. So like a nice way to explore a pattern I already love um, with you guys on YouTube. So let's get our lovely sewing machine out and onto the desk. Currently, it's covered in work laptops. <laughs> and we will get going. show you from the other side we end up with yeah nice big pocket so this will go on this side of my hip and the pocket size in these like in the trousers as well are insanely good so let me walk you through what I've done to create this 
Uh, firstly, just a reminder, all seam allowances on this garment are a centimetre and a half. So we need pattern piece for the shorts. It is pattern piece I is the side front short, which is the piece with a nice curved edge that goes on the outside here. So on this side, and then we've got a piece that goes here as well. So it's got a nice little notch at the top and this is where you attach the pocket. So the pocket is piece J for the shorts. It looks counterintuitively huge, but what you do with it is, this goes at the top, this will attach to your waist, like um, to your facing, this is your waist here. And then the piece folds. So if I neatly fold it, it's got a dotted line where your fold line is. It folds back on itself like so. Your front piece here then attaches like that to create your pocket. So there is another little piece of this puzzle, this little strip here, which is interfacing to the top of your side front pocket piece. So where is the pocket? That's the next question. Yes, so this is the other side of my shorts. My interfacing has annoyingly just fallen off. Uh, it's not sticking super well to the denim, uh, but once it's stitched, like once you stitch over it, it's fine. Sorry, just quick QR on camera. Okay, I don't have a proper ironing board in this house. It'll, you'll have to live in an actual house when I can have an ironing board. So, pocket piece. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, I'm going to attach this to this piece. So right sides together, we do it like this. So together like that, we'll stitch it along flip it over so we get this, then we fold our pocket piece up and that's our pocket. So let's do the next one. Beautiful. Now we're going to create the inside leg. So we've got a whole front trouser. For that, we need a lovely piece K. I love the way, I know I say this every time, I love the way they letter their pattern pieces. It just makes them so much easier to use. Um, so piece K is going to, rather neatly, let's take one side. Piece K is going to, is that this side? Yes, it is. We're just going to attach it like that fold it out and then look at that we've got a short so we'll do the same on both sides and then I think I'll combine the next step as well basically one onto the other same on the other side nice and simple and then we just join it at that centre seam down to the end of the crotch so it's like that first actually we join it down the length of the pattern piece seam here so this is the front crotch all the way down there and then we have one continuous front piece of our trousers, which is really exciting. And then there'll be time for some top stitching. top stitching but here they are so very chuffed these actually and last time I sewed them in a very flowy fabric so sewing them in a stable fabric is a joy uh, you also may have noticed that I'm not really using pins at the moment I don't need to on this it doesn't move it's fine it's such a short length as well you can pretty much hold it and it's all looking pretty good to me so I'm, I'm okay I'm just feeling a bit lazy really um, and if I turn it round that last step I didn't really talk about so we sewed the front pieces together what we then do is we trim that 5 eighths down to a, um, to a 3 eighths seam allowance 
and then you finish it either with your overlocker or I've just done the zigzag because my overlocker is currently threaded black and I've just, you know, I'm fine with this. It doesn't really need much more to be honest. So we then press that to the left. I currently don't have a tailor's ham. I really want one. Um, so I can't properly press that curve there, but I think it's looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna dive on in and do a little bit of top stitching. So if I get our nice little instructions, which as always are actually really good, we need to do our top stitching before we, um, like it, the top stitching is optional, I should say, but um, you need to do it before you attach the facing, obviously. So we top stitch along the front leg seam to secure it. So. The question is, and I remember this from last time, and I can't remember what I did now I think about it. Which side do we top stitch? Do we top stitch the pocket side? I feel like we, yes. Okay, so looking at the pictures, we top stitch the pocket side. Hang on, I'm gonna see what I did on my trousers the first time. Okay, rightly or wrongly, the first time I top stitched down the pocket side and it looked nice. So I'm gonna do that again. So I'm gonna press the seam this way towards the pocket like that, and I'm just gonna top stitch down here. But that requires swapping over to my lovely top stitch thread. So, where is my snips at the moment? They're in here somewhere. And I kind of need to get everything out this weekend and actually find them, because they're really, really useful. But I've not been able to find them pretty much since we moved, actually, so it's been a while. Um, one new thing in the sewing room, while I switch my thread, is um, I'm rather partial to Fortnum's um, loose leaf tea. But I had, had a tin left over and I was like, oh, what do I do with it? Obviously, I, I might get a refill for it still. But at the moment, I have another different type of loose leaf breakfast tea from, well, not breakfast tea, English sort of black tea. There we go, that's the phrase. Um, I've got another pot of black tea in the kitchen at the moment, so I'm all right without this. Um, so I've started using it for my thread bits that just accumulate on here. So anything small like this sort of stuff, loose threads from when you snip them, you know, just... The things that sort of accumulate and currently are sticking to my trousers go in here, which is really quite really useful. So let's change everything over. One thing that really, I've never used top stitching thread before. And one thing that actually really surprised me was, I don't know, I just didn't imagine it would be as, as thick as it is. Catch my thumb there, there we go. Um, I don't know why I didn't, but like I've, I've seen it, but I've just never thought about like, look how thick that is, like you can, it's like string almost. It filled up the bobbin in seconds. So let's pop that through here. There we go. Straight in the tin. Lovely. That closed. That on top of the machine. Sorry, that's my hand fully in the camera. It's like I've never done this before. <laughs> um, I made sure to buy the same colour. And then we're going to thread our top stitching thread through the machine. My Singer Heavy Duty machine being absolute queen as always. This is the machine I love to use when I'm like short on time or I'm feeling tired or lazy, just because there's little things like I can set the speed limiter slow if I'm feeling really tired and I want to make sure I don't make any mistakes. And like, I don't know, it's just like I can knot off the end of seam so I don't backstitch and do something wrong. Well, oh yeah, I'm currently on a zigzag, that's why, there we go. And I'm going to set my stitch length at four because stop, top stitching always looks nice longer. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press my seams the other way. Thinking about it, I'm pretty sure in the instructions it tells you to press your seams towards the pockets anyway. I'm just, I don't know, I'm, I do read instructions, like I do. It's just that, you know, they don't always go in or... Well, sometimes, actually, no, do you know what? Sometimes I just don't read instructions and it is what it is, frankly. Also, sorry if you can see this pile here. I have a massive fabric backlog of projects that I just need to get on with. So I am on a fabric ban. Obviously, I did a little fabric haul last week because there's a couple of bits I wanted for my holiday. Um, but I do actually need to buckle down and get on with some sewing with stuff I've got. On the plus side, though, I have some really, really beautiful fabrics. So... Lots of very, very fun things to make. So this is very stiff. So that's sort of manually doing it as well, to an extent. There we go. There we go. 
apologies if you can't see what I'm doing. Um, I love, so I have a Singer iron and I love it, but I was looking at Singer Outlet recently and they've got one of the new irons, I've forgotten, it's yellow, it looks really fancy and it's really bad, like I've got a working iron, it's fabulous, but I kind of want to go with that new iron as well to see what the difference is. Um, it's one of the, I bet the thing is, because I do a lot of work with them, I think if I asked, I was like, can I try that iron? I think they would let me, but I don't want to be cheeky, you know? There we go. There we go. Right. Lovely. So, let's take that off here. Let's have a go at some top stitching. So I always do top stitching from the front. I believe you're actually meant to. Um, because... Obviously, you can make sure it looks nice and stitches are made to be seen from the top. So you should do your top stitching from the top and that's entirely unavoidably from other, another direction. I'm going to put the speed limiter right down and we're going to see how we go. So first far into top stitching. Well, not sorry, that's inaccurate. First far into using top stitching thread. Okay, I'm using a 130 weight needle go reposition it's gonna struggle a little bit with that lump of that seam that's okay let's get it going again this will give me a nice sharp line on the short which i want and it gives it a bit more structure after a few washes as well I'm really excited about these. I just hope I look nice in them and don't look like awkward. Mind you, it might be a length thing. So once I've sort of finished them, if the hem as it suggests is not a nice length on me, I can always make them shorter. Um, I don't think I'd want to make them longer because I'm quite short anyway. So the chances are they might just be a little bit longer than me. But we will see because they're high waisted and I do like a pair of high waisted shorts a lot. Come um, on, through the machine. Thank you. Okay, first top stitch seam. Have a look at that. Doesn't that look nice? Oh, I'm chuffed with that. All right, let's give it a press. There we go. Bit of steam. This denim press is really nice as well. There we go. Cute. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. There we go. Ta-da. I love top stitching. It's one of my favourite things. It used to make me so, so nervous. And I'll be honest, depending on what it is, it sometimes still does. Um, but I really, I, I love the way it looks. I love the sort of, I know, when I look at that right now, it just looks really beautiful. And it just looks so, I, do you know what it is? It looks professional, it looks intentional. And I love that, because it, it in many ways as well makes me realise how far I've come with my sewing. Come on, come on. Machine. Doing very, very well. Talk to my machine right now because we're coming up to the pocket bump. So we don't want any wrinkling here, and it's made its way over the pocket bump like an absolute dream. There we go. Just making sure as it's stretch fabric, making sure that it is in place. It's not pulling in one direction or the other. It's where I want it to be. Because the other thing about top stitching is if you've got something wrong and you top stitch it down in the wrong place, it is really, really, really obvious. I do, I find myself loving top stitching, particularly when it's like down the centre of a garment. I always think that looks really pretty. Um, the new cashmere Kinnerton dress has like train track top stitching down the front, like the Made My Wardrobe and Mayor shirt does. And I love it. It takes me a long time because I like when it's two lines either side of a straight seam, you really have to make sure it's perfectly like not only is it parallel with the seam, but it's parallel with the other line. So I'm always holding my breath a little bit when I do it. But I do absolutely love the way it looks. Fabulous. We have got some top stitch seams. Beautiful. Okay, let's press that. So now we're going to do our facing and the first step of our facing is a little bit of interfacing of pieces. So I've got them cut out here on the ironing board. So what we're going to do is basically we have got 
a centre front. So one of these plus one of interfacing, which opens out to be the middle um, across your waist. And then here are the two side panels. So we stitch these together and then it's very basic. Bang it on here, flip it over, understitch it, press it, and we've got the top of our shorts. So I'll pop your entire lapse while we do that. And then we'll be onto the back of our shorts. We're actually so nearly done. We're like over halfway here. Beautiful, cute shorts. So let's make our facing. I've understitched it as well and then this bit is counterintuitive and I actually did this wrong um sorry dry throat when I first made these trousers I didn't really get this bit so I kind of didn't do it so you understitch it and then you baste it down here so that what you actually have like if you were to turn it through what you have is this nice sort of complete sealed edge so what we actually then do is bear with me here we pull it through to the right side we do a little bit of stitching in the ditch down the three middle seams so one two three to hold this in place and then we flip it back through and when we have our trouser waistband it attaches under here, it sort of folds in on itself, and then when we turn it all the way back through, we will have a complete pair of trousers with fully sealed seams, which will look really nice. Um, I'm going to stitch in the ditch. I am going to stitch in the ditch now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my edge stitching foot, which is somewhere. There is my edge stitching foot. Possibly in here. Interesting. I think I've lost my edge stitching foot. Very exciting. Or it'll be in one of my machines. Oh well, I can use this one just as well. Um, or this might be the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about the one that has a little ski, because um, I find that really useful for stitching in the ditch. But I'll use this one. It's just got a nice little guide which I can um, move in and out. And I find this to be the best fit for stitching in the ditch. Lots of other people use their zip foot, which also works. Um, anything that gives you just that little bit of extra sort of precision. A lot of people can also stitch in the ditch using their normal foot, but I've always, I've always struggled with that. So let's turn it through, poke out our corners. When we get to the end, we'll like snip them properly so that they, they go out. But just for now, I'm going to turn them out properly so that I get my stitch in the ditch right. And then we're good to go. So let's pop that on. Press. There we go. This iron's really clever because it turns off after like 15 minutes, or if you like leave it like this, it'll turn off. I'm um, sorry, if you leave it like that, it will turn off. Um, as in not while you're using it, but like if it if it stays like that still, it'll turn itself off, so it's not a fire risk, which big big fan of. So let's pop this here. And we're going to go put this machine on the slowest it can go so that I don't accidentally freak out and speed up. I'm going to have a go. So my little, um, my little, I've got a little white guide on my foot there. And I'm keeping that on the seam line. Just to help me hit the right place. And we're only going to do down to like pretty much just above the pocket and there we go i'll tidy up the threads on that in a minute so i'll do the other side of that now Thank you. 
beautiful. And there we go. So let's now create the back of our shorts. So as I um, am want to do really on here, I try to always be honest with you guys. Now I mentioned last time that I didn't do this step because I didn't think it made sense. And that is because I misunderstood the drawing. It doesn't make sense and that's why my last trousers worked and these ones would not. So we need to unpick this stitching and do exactly what I did last time, which is turn it through and stitch the facing down here. Fine, glad I noticed it here. But yeah, just, cause it is a sew along. Um, I could so easily have cut out that bit where I told you to do that. I really could have, but I am a real sewist. And by that, I mean, I am fallible. I am a person. I am not here to teach you necessarily. I am here to share this with you, which involves my mistakes and what I do wrong. And generally, I want to be honest with you guys. Sewing is fun. And one of the many ways we can <laughs> forsake the pressure of social media is by admitting that we are fallible human beings. Even no matter how many people follow you, if two people follow you or 20,000 people follow you, you're a human being who makes mistakes. And I just want to make sure that everyone is aware of that. So um, I know there are going to be lots of people going, oh, well, you shouldn't be on YouTube if you make mistakes. Well, I am here. Enjoy it. Do you know what? It's curiously liber liberating being so stressed at work because it reminds you that your hobbies are hobbies. <laughs> uh, the iron is now going to turn off unless I make it do something. There we go. Stop now. I like that it does that though because it's much safer. I have been known to leave rooms and just the iron is on because you go and answer the door and then you make yourself a cup of tea and then you come back to the sewing room and realise the iron's been switched on for two hours. It happens, you know. So I like the safety feature on that that it does turn itself off. Right, peeing that off. Where's my normal foot? There it is, behind my drink. So I want to try and get these shorts finished and then I'm gonna go and make dinner for Adam and I. Um, but I, yeah, I kind of want to get these done, partly so I can share the vlog with you tomorrow. And of course, partly so that um, I don't think about it tomorrow. Like when I'm at the hairdresser tomorrow, it's like, oh, I've done nice sewing tonight. Six hours in the hairdresser tomorrow because this, I don't become blonde by magic. As you'll see, my roots are incredibly dark. Um, so desperately in need of my hairdresser to sort my life out. Oh, run slow because of the edge stitching. Where are we? There we go. I love my knot button because that stitching on a machine often can just cause huge issues like um, wrinkling your fabric or catching itself. Obviously, you know, it is the standard way of doing it, but I find them quite a messy back stitcher. So I, I love my knot button, I really do. So let's bang this on here. There we go, lovely. We're only basting this, remember, because it will get caught when we do our trouser seam anyway. For the side of the trousers, which we're going to do in a second, I promise. There we go. Yeah, I've tried to make this vlog a good mix of actually doing and being chatty. Right. There we go. Let's give that a quick iron. One thing I'm not as keen on about this iron is that it fills from the bottom. So it has to kind of be totally empty for you to fill it or you have to wait, like you have to fill it. You can't top it up while you're using it unless there's a way I've not found. Um, but it's a struggle to top it up while it's hot because if it's got any water in it and you tip it, all the water comes out, obviously. Um, as in it drips out of here and the top of the iron. But I have yet to find a different way to fill it. If anyone has this iron and is like, you're an idiot, fill it this way. Do you let me know because, you know, I'm not proud. I just want to know that it doesn't drip when I fill it. There we go. Now we're going to do the backs of the trousers and um, waistband elastic and we're home free.
have a pair of shorts. They're not attached to the inseam yet, but that is deliberate. And we've got this bit sticking up at the back. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna attach our elastic to this seam. We're then gonna fold this down, stitch it down. I believe there's something nifty at you. Oh yes, brain. So elastic goes on this seam as stipulated. This actually folds over the top to there to meet the other side and then we will turn that through so you do get an enclosed seam and your elastics inside the back we're so nearly there so what i am going to do quickly is actually pick what elastic i'm using because i've not actually decided um what well, and when i say i've not decided i've not dug it out yet so i have still got some thick waistband elastic which will probably end up using so i've still got this I don't have any white elastic, well, I do, but it's all very thin. Um, but it's denim, it won't show through. So I'm gonna use this elastic. So the way I normally do it is halfing my waist measurement. So that is 26 and a half, near 26 at the moment. Um, so 13 inches, and then that's my actual waist measurement. So we're then gonna take what do I normally do? So the pull of that is quite tight elastic, but I like a tight waist. I hate um, high-waisted things that slip down. So I'm probably going to go 10 centimetres. That should probably... Um, does that sound right? Yeah, that sounds right. So... <laughs> no, it doesn't sound right. Do you know why it doesn't sound right? Because my waist is in inches. 10 inches. <laughs> I am very tired. So that's 10 inches there. So I'll cut that. Um, I'm not worried about it being too tight because the elastic will loosen as well when I wash it and I'll just, so just exercising my elastic at the moment. Because this also means that you might put it on and be like, oh, it's lovely and tight and after one where it relaxes. So if we sort of, I forget what the term is, but basically exercise our elastic. There we go. Um, and yeah, so last time I did 13, I took an inch off it and it still was too big. So let's go with 10. Um, and that should be, oh no, the whole thing's unrolled, damn it. Right. So it's really funny. So when I make these videos, I always end up editing out a good amount of actual expletives. But one I did recently, <gasps> I say damn a lot, which, you know, is a, the nonest of non-swears at all. It's, it's, an ex, it's an exclamation, it's not an expletive. You should hear what I edit out. So, I did get a comment going, oh, your language is appalling. You keep saying damn and oh God. And I'm like, have you been to the UK? <laughs> the thing is as well, at the end of the day, everyone has different standards of language. Um, but, you know, I always think it's different swearing about something. It's like swearing when you're driving versus swearing at somebody aggressively. Um, and actually there are health benefits to swearing, particularly if you're in pain. Um, they can lessen the pain, so, you know, fun fact. But yeah, that's that's my sort of personal take on that. I'm being quite rambly today, but I kind of feel it. Like it's it's been a long week and it feels nice to, to chat to my lovely YouTube sewing pals. So, there we go, this elastic is away. Also, because somebody will ask, this is 25, 30 centimetre, what is it, 30 mil? 50, it's 50 mil, um, the elastic I'm using. That's bigger than the pattern asks for, but it's the width that I prefer personally on my waist because I find it doesn't dig in and it sits really nicely. So, let's pop our elastic onto the seam. We can do that together. Which seam does it go on? So we're already going to, before we put the elastic on one side, we fold the top over and it should pretty much meet there. Well, that might be a little bit smaller for my elastic actually. It might be a touch small, but to be honest, for this one, because we're sewing channels in anyway, I might just stitch it along the bottom um, and hold it in place and it'll be fine. It's gonna be really fun sewing channels on this because my elastic is half the diameter of the back of the shorts, but it's how it will be um, and how it needs to be to fit my body properly. So we're gonna stitch these bits down. I'll do it on camera, why not? Um, now. 
told me to stitch a little bit down so I've got a neat inside edge, but I might sacrifice that to have more elastic room. We'll see, we'll see. So, we're gonna stitch that down. We stitch it, yeah, we're stitching it in line. So it's not basting, we are stitching it properly. So holding that down, where is my 5 8 marker? There it is. And this is when the heavy duty machines really come into their own. That's like, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's six layers. Although, be it, you know, very lightweight denim, it's six layers of denim and this machine is like, yeah, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> lovely and let's get that off the top and same on the other side that's it oh that's my drink there we go it's a beautiful evening tonight as well and it's meant to be sunny this weekend so if it's nice and warm i would quite like to get some wear out of these no, that's definitely going to be too small. Oh, how irritating. Oh, well. Is what it is. We'll make it work. As with everything I do sewing wise, we'll just make it work. stitch down our elastic then gets added somewhere where are we putting you doesn't actually matter it just says on one of the side seams so let's pop it in the back it's hard with elastic and the thing is I have graded do you know what I never actually talked about this when I cut out the pattern I graded between a size four and a size six and think about it, that's why my pockets don't fit, because I just cut them out as a fall, forgetting. Um, but that's fine. Oh, for goodness sake. And let's zigzag it back. I always zigzag elastic in place. Because it copes better with the stretching required. Okay, so the other end of the elastic remains loose for now. And then we're going to neatly, I say neatly as if I do anything neatly at any point. Um, hold on, what's going on here? Ah, there we go. We flip that top bit over. And then, I'm going to immediately unpick this line of stitching I've sewn, because I've sewn it unevenly and I've ended up with um, an uneven elastic channel. Um, I don't particularly care what the inside of my garments look like generally, as long as they're not itchy or fraying or catching my skin. This is fine. And when I say fraying, I mean like, you know the way this goes froze when it just is like hanging out your clothes suddenly. Um, but you know, I'm not, if this edge isn't finished, I don't actually care that much. So let's do that. Also, I tried that thing. You know how you're meant to use your seam ripper this way up and like rip along a seam? I found that just creates loads of holes in my garments. Um, so I don't know if maybe it depends what fabric you're using or how sharp, maybe I need to sharpen my seam ripper. It certainly gets a lot of use. I don't even know how you'd go about sharpening one of these though. Let's get that unpicked. And then what we do is stitch it down by the looks of it. I only sewed this a few weeks ago and I'm already forgetting. So we sew it closed and then we leave a four inch gap at the other end to pull it through and secure it again and do that. So I'm going to do that off camera because otherwise you're just going to be looking at my forehead as I sit and um, um, just unpick this forever. But we're so nearly there. So it's just this, some elastic channeling and our inseam and then a hem. So we are getting there. Go. 
done my elastic in the back and I've done my ruching. Um, it's not bad, quite happy with that. Again, I'm not the fussiest in the world with these things. So let's turn them right side through because then all we've got to do is our inseam and our hem. So we are looking really good here. Pretty happy with these. They promise to be pretty comfortable. So let's do our inseam. And then I'm going to go make dinner and I'm going to hem them in the morning. So I look forward to seeing you guys in the morning for that. But final job is with the short, it's nice and easy. Our inseam takes about two seconds. Lift it up, sew it in, I've got a pair of shorts. So, oh yeah, I do need to go make dinner because it's getting quite late. And it's my turn to cook tonight. So it kind of is my fault if we don't have dinner. Um, so <laughs> let's sew our inseam. And then we're ready to go. so I'm hoping it won't be too echoey and you can hear me properly. Here are my finished shorts. I love them. I love them so much. They're so cute. They're a tiny bit loose, but I think that's quite good because, you know, in the summer, I go out for drinks, bloat a little bit, barbecues, that kind of stuff, you know, a little bit of room, but they fit really, really nicely, I think. And I love, I stand here, I love that they don't hug my legs too much. Um, one thing I always struggle with with denim shorts, I think I've talked about this before, is I always feel like squeezed into them and I never feel comfortable and like, you know, I'm always like picking at them and pulling them down. Whereas these, there's so much space that I just feel comfortable. I feel good about my legs. I feel confident. And that was kind of the end goal. I also feel very sort of kind of seaside vibes, which I love. Um, they're really, really cute. So all in all, pretty massive success. First denim project, first pair of shorts, and they are going to be ready for my holiday in July. And hopefully, it's due to hit 28 degrees next week, so hopefully I can get away with wearing these um, as well <laughs> in the UK on multiple occasions. So absolutely loving these. All the rooms we should say is thank you so much for watching. Um, it's been a while since I've done a good sew along, so if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you want to hear more from me. Um, I'm coming up for two years on YouTube, so I am looking to do something to celebrate. Um, so if you've got any ideas as well or anything you'd like to see, I'm thinking about maybe doing like, maybe like a YouTube live or something. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. So, um, that's at the end of this month. So if you've got any ideas, let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Have a great week and have a good sewing time.